Hello fellow pipe smokers, Janis here on this lovely and uh, a bit humid Wednesday evening. I'm in my shop uh, preparing to light my new pipe for the first time. I have also chosen the tobacco that I will smoke in this pipe due to the huge bowl. And this will be Boswell's Northwoods. Uh, I bought this tobacco, or seller this tobacco more correctly, on 1st of December 2018. So it has like a year and a half age on it, at least since there was no information when this was produced. And I think it's uh, made quite often at Boswell's, so it must have been fresh when it was thinned. So, let me first give you uh, some insight on this tobacco. So, Boswell Pipes and Tobacco is the brand, Northwoods. And the description says, full-bodied and full flavor. A deeply complex English, but with a smooth and mild base of Latakia, along with toasted Virginias. JM had blended Northwoods for himself to smoke, but then the customers started asking him what he was smoking and his answer was, have a bowl. Northwoods has become, has become one of our most popular dares blend. So Bosel Pipes and Tobacco, English, blend type, Virginia, Latakia and Black Cavendish, no flavoring, ribbon cut, packaging it's in bulk but it also comes in these unsealed tins. There was only a, um, a transparent foil heat that was heated and it shrank uh, around the around the lid, but I removed that and I used parafilm to seal this can. Let's say. So let me just let me open this. Okay. You will immediately see how the parafilm is working after, let's say, one and a half years. Okay, it is a bit drier than I remember. Let me show you the tobacco, quite black, but it has a really tasty, sweet, woodsy, or smoky note. And let me continue with this. The strength is medium, flavoring is mild, let's say. Taste is medium to full and the room note is pleasant to tolerable. Rating is 3.5 out of 4. And this came from 130 reviews. So I don't think I need to make a special announcement or a special uh, description to this for this tobacco because it has been smoked by many pipers there's a number of videos talking about this tobacco the cut is a bit it's a bit coarse cut it's not a ribbon so the pieces are much bigger than the usual let's say downhill ribbon cut so let me fill this pipe and then I will uh, share with you my experience of smoking this Ser Jacopo pipe for the first time and I will tell you something or read something about Pesara uh, pipe making school. So I'll be right back. So the taste that I'm getting here actually covers most of the notes that I smelled before 
The smoke is quite creamy, smooth. And let me tell you that this pipe is unfiltered. I have a number of unfiltered pipe, pipes. Tasty tobacco and with this I will enjoy some Laphroaig for Oak that I'm currently sipping in my videos as you can recall if you are uh, watching them regularly. So most of my, my pipes are from three companies. These are Stanwell, Peterson and Savinelli. I do have some other pipes like I have two pipes from Polish pipe maker Albin. I have a one from one giant poker from Sergei Novakowski. I have a um, I will not a Radice pipe. So this is the other school in Italy. So Radice. This was um, I won this one in Mike from Briar Blues. Um, giveaway so and, and I think I have one uh, uh, found pipe it's just a basic one and this design Berlin from Planta and I have a few others, but more or less I have these three, so Stanwell, Savinelli and Peterson Pipes. Okay. So until now, I really didn't have pipes that would be, at least when they were made, on a higher end, let's say of the price range I'm not talking about 500 1000 and so, so on dollars euros pounds and, but just being let's say when they were made um, uh, priced more than let's say 150 euros or dollars But as I said, in the last month, I bought two pipes from my fellow pipe smokers here, smoker here in Slovenia. And the first one was this, Don Carlos, Canadian. And the second one is this, Seriakopo, giant bent bulldog. So, I said I will uh, share with you uh, something about Pesaro pipe making school and I will read a short part from a uh, article on Pipedia the title is thoughts on Italian pipes by Sykes Wilford and this article is a courtesy of smokingpipes.com and I will put the link down in the bucket, but I usually don't do, don't go so deep in, in, into tobacco pipe aspect of our hobby, but this time I will go and uh, just read you uh, a short part talking about Italian pipes, especially about uh, Pesaro pipe making school. So, thoughts? On Italian pipes. It's tough not to love Italian pipes, whether from Pesaro or the area around Como, north of Milan, so Lago di Como, Lake 
Como. Italian pipe makers have a sense of flair and elegance that sets them apart in pipe making world. No, Italians are known for their design. This update spans from those two major Italian pipe making regions with Ser Jacopo and Rinaldo from Pesaro, and Ardor, Radice and Brebia, all from near Como. Though there is a neoclassical streck in almost all Italian pipes, they are considered stylistic differences, there are considerable stylistic differences between the two regions. The Pissarro style, or school, is most closely associated with Mastro de Paia and Ser Jacopo, and the man behind both companies, Giancarlo Guidi, who currently runs Ser Jacopo, but previously headed up the pipe making team at Mastro de Paia. According to Guidi and others, the Pesaro school was created in the 1960s and 1970s by small groups of local craftsmen who then splintered off into the various brands. The cross-pollination of ideas generated during the early years established the Pesaro school and that exchanged, exchange of ideas continues today. Il Cepo and Mastro de Paia are the oldest brands from the area that still makes pipes. With Guidi splitting off from Mastro de Paia in 1982 to found Ser Jacopo. Giorgio Imperatori, who founded Il Cepo, worked with Giancarlo Guidi in the very early Pesaro school days before Guidi founded Mastro de Paia. Similarly, Bruto Sordini of Don Carlos, Don Carlos, got his start under Guidi at Master de Paia. Many of the newer Italian brands, such as Rinaldo and Lanaltra, also have close ties to one of the older companies. The Pesaro school is most traditionally neoclassical. Essentially, that means that they took classical English shapes, billiards, Dublins, Bulldogs, etc., and recreated them in a new and interesting ways. Shapes are in many cases determined by the grain, certainly not to the degree that many Danish, German and American pipes are. But unlike most English pipes, especially in the years past, the Pesaro school certainly considers grain in the making of the of their pipes. Looking back at the beginning of the 21st century, this seems almost obvious. However, in the 1960s, neither the Italian pipe renaissance nor the Danish revolution spurred by 16 Iverson and Pribenholm had yet come to pass. Until then, while attractive grain was considered positive, if it happened, it happened by accident. One need only look at the Dunhills, GBDs, Barlings, Comois, and other great English pipes from 1950s and before to see this. Combining this regard, this regard for the traditional shapes with a concern to grain, one begins to understand the Pesaro pipe. Other influences are involved also though. For lack of a better descriptor, Pesaro pipes look Italian. English pipes reflect British culture to a degree, to a great degree, perhaps best articulated by traditional refined elegance. Italian pipes, like Italian cars, are thematically more modern and more chic in their elegance. And the article goes on, and as I said, you will be able to read about uh, or find the article if you will just click on the link in the description box. Now, here in the YTPC, if you are following Mike at Briar Blues, and I think most of you are, you will be able to hear a lot about Italian pipes, Italian school of pipe schools of pipe making. Also, the, the, the second one that I didn't 
mentioned a lot. This is the one around Lake Como, north of Milan. But if you would like to somehow know who is the reference for Italian pipes in the YTPC, is Mike at Briar Blues. Okay. I was reading and uh, the pipe went out, so... This Boswell Northwoods is really more, in, more on the mild side. But the, the smoke is really tasty, really smooth, creamy. I don't know what they do with the tobacco to make it this way. But for sure the Black Cavendish has something to do with it. Because I have smoked a number of Virginia Latakia or English blends that had uh, or still have Black Cavendish maybe even a little bit sweetened black Cavendish uh, in the recipe and I can remember those notes. So, sorry for being so long or being, uh, let's say, taken away by Italian pipes. I hope I was not uh, <laughs> too, much, too boring for you. Uh, just wanted to, to share my experience uh, with Italian pipes now that I have other pipes than Savinelli pipes and uh, I'm really enjoying smoking this one both of this so this Don Carlos and this uh, Ser Jacopo are from early days of the brands so this one is this one is pre-1997, due to the red dot here on the stem. And this one has no, neither the line nor the violin key uh, on the stem. So it's also from early days. Correct me if I'm wrong, of course. So, have a nice rest of the week. Until we meet again, a lot of pleasant smokes.